Welcome to another episode sailing Ruby Rose from the Saigon shipyard. Today I have been on the boat already. What are we doing today? A couple of things. A lot is going on engine bay. This makes my heart beat a little bit faster because as you know I have a real thing for well laid out engine bays and this is something we worked very very hard with back in 2019 to make sure that the engine bay easily accessible filtration systems that could easily be changed at sea and that is almost together now so i'm going to take you to the engine bay number one number two the cabinet doors are going on that is super interesting to see because you'll get to see the design and how everything is kind of like designed to kind of have that what would i say neo retro vibe that's the second thing and the third thing is the nav desk templating done for that They've now taken away the upstands that we saw in the last episode and they've now got the desk and I haven't seen the two together. So let's get on board and have a really good look because it is all starting to come together. Hope you enjoy this one. So the guy there, he's just walking past with the draw fronts. It's, it is titillating, but before we get to draw fronts, I want to take you into the engine bay. So this is hole one port side engine bay. Let's take a deep dive down into this one. The step is in place to stop you accidentally touching the engine, which gives you like a, a much better point to, to step down into. And all this has been done because we talked quite extensively about making sure that step heights aren't just for the six foot six strapping Canadian, but actually for the slightly more diminutive frame. So let's get into that engine bay and take a really good look. Let's just jump down without killing myself. Oops. There's a lot going on in here and it is a small space, but yet let's talk about everything I can see and I'm going to spin around. Let me just start with what is behind me. Battery boxes, battery isolators. So this is going to be engine start battery. Again, isolators there, important, easily accessible. Next, filtration system. Filtration there. Part one filtration. So again, there are multiple filtration systems on this. These common rail engines need a second level of filtration. So we've got fuel filters there, easily visible. And this is something that Ruby Rose always used to give me the shits for, an easily visible bowl for the fuel filtration. So again, I can see that really, really easily. And again, engine components, we have exhaust muffler, engine here, this step is here to actually take, take your weight. And then again, we've got the header tank for the fresh water steering system here. Just for everyone that's picked up on this, this is not fully tightened yet. And then down here, we have, again, more tankage. It's quite dark here. So yeah, lots, lots to see here. Now, let's just, let's just move up. And again, this is all obviously covered so it doesn't get damaged. We have the great, obviously, engine bay vent. Actually, nice engine bay. Everything accessible. Now, as I sit in this little crammed engine bay, something that you have all been asking about is the alternators. We are having the Mastervolt high output 200 amp alternators. And the question that you're asking is, is there just one alternator or are there two? And now we have confirmation there are two alternators on this engine. So let me just run this through with you. Let me just spin this round, apologies. Alternator one, standard alternator. And then the second alternator, which is here, is the big master vault one so again having used this system the master vault high output alternators on a 1260 that we charted uh, last year can confirm output from these is insanely high so good nice to see and it doesn't actually impinge upon the space in the engine bay it has a dedicated place to it so yeah all good so that nice to see the high output alternators. this is actually a really nice engine bay as, as much as I could like an engine bay. So engine bay, I will go and check the starboard side because it may be that it's uh, different, but I'm not anticipating anything too different in that one. So let's head over there now. Okay, let's just have a quick look in the starboard side engine bay. Just step down here without losing my footing. And again, just to confirm, I'm gonna have a quick look in here. It is almost identical, but for another question that we had is, are the high powered alternators on both engines? The answer clearly is yes, because I can see them down there. Let me just spin the camera around and show you all this. So there, alternator number one, you can see there is a little, the, the 
teal covered mark of master bolt and then the standard alternator down there so you are looking at four alternators but one thing that i do want to show you and i am going to step down into here because i've now seen this okay get my fat ass onto this so now we have the hydraulic ram for the autopilot fitted it is all bolted through with the correct size washers so it's bolted and glassed so it's super important that that's done other things i just want to point out to you we now have these this port lights now these are glass and they're bloody heavy actually they're glass reinforced glass smoked with the opening hatch to go through nice so as i promised you let us go and have a look at the nav station if you remember from last week's episode all this curved surface is going to be for instrumentation switching gear but now we have this the actual desk is in place and it follows the same theme that seems to be repeated throughout the boat that kind of beautiful i love it that beautiful kind of curvature which kind of like gives the cabinetry uh, a distinctive look so again thank you Miriam. another note there i think we've got battery isolators there because the lithium batteries are going to be underneath that bench so that's going to be pretty sexy again the whole battery system is going to live in there we have master vault inverters air conditioning unit all plumbed in now and let's just have a quick look down here so yeah that's in there. so as you can see now this distinctive look to this cabinetry which has got these beautiful handles and a lot of storage space so this will be used for storage again that storage there and then these guys obviously are just making sure that everything is plumb so now let's take a quick spin onto the foredeck i'm not sure a lot's been done there but it'll be good to see if any movement has taken place so importantly something that we've been asked about a lot is about the width how much space you're going to get how much walking room now i understand that shrouds have got to go here but essentially these these side decks are pretty damn spacious so again on the 1260 i had to swing myself around the shrouds also on ruby rose 2 oh sorry ruby rose 1 i had to swing myself around the shrouds on this i don't need to but things that it is important to see and i know i keep promising you this but obviously it hasn't been done yet now we have the opening windows and we've been asked a lot about these windows are they going to open let me just spin around over here. I'm going to just step between these two very, very, very expensive pieces of glass. These are the windows. And honestly, they are bloody good looking windows. Super thick and definitely they're all hinged and articulated, made by Lumar. They are going to be a real wow factor in this boat. We have talked so, so much about ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. And these, yeah, beautiful, like beautiful. I think that really style over function is not something we should ever go through, but where you can where you can put style and function together, then you have something special. So like me really. So now we have the two front windows, the side windows, and some of the other smaller windows are going in. So there's a lot of glass being delivered from Australia to fit into this boat. So yeah. So super sexy, super fun to see. One final thing to show you today. It's a 10 o'clock break. And this is vaguely gonna be turned goodies goodies not the 1970 sitcom but all the bits there that it's like bloody christmas for me spectral water maker cookout barbecue viti frigo fridge from italy Ooh, electric toilets electric toilets electric toilets and i am pretty damned stoked about it now i'm going to interrupt this episode to have one of our patron questions answered because there are a lot of questions now. Seawind can answer a lot of the technical questions, but there are questions that actually fall to us to answer. Things that actually fall outside of the remit of technical and into the remit of, well, your experience with these boats, what would you say? So today's question is from Jack Chen. Jack Chen is the prospective owner of one of the 1370s. And his question is, what do you see? I should read this, I don't get it wrong. Since you have a bit of a sailing experience, what do you foresee as the biggest issue in sailing the 1370? And what is your plan to work around it? It's actually a really good question. And this is something that we have thought about very, very extensively. The biggest issue with sailing these boats or for us is getting used to the size of it. I remember when we went to Ruby Rose at a 38 foot boat going from a 32 foot boat I remember thinking we are never going to get used to the size of this it is huge and this is a big lump of boat it is also a very powerful powerful boat this is going to be lightweight and fast and as such we need to respect 
the power in that rig and treat it carefully. So the two things that I think are gonna be paramount. Number one, obviously close quartered maneuvering. From our time in the Whit Sundays, actually it's a different and in some ways easier experience with two engines to be able to literally turn a boat on its like center point, which you can't do with Ruby Rose. The close quartered maneuvering is gonna be difficult and lots of fenders, lots and lots and lots of fenders. The second thing is having a rig that is super, super powerful and making sure that we sail by numbers. But essentially my biggest concern, although it's a minor concern, is going to be the size and the power of this boat compared to what we've come from. And that is gonna involve making sure that we never go too far outside of the, the, our comfort levels. For us, that will be reefing early. We always reef super early in a monohull because although with Ruby Rose, when we sailed across the Atlantic, yeah, of course, the boat will do seven, seven and a half knots. And everyone's like, oh, you're traveling on seven and a half knots. But I can absolutely tell you that the difference between traveling at seven and six, between six knots on Ruby Rose and seven knots on Ruby Rose, for one knot of speed increase, we lost 50% of our comfort. At seven and a half knots, we've lost another 25% of our comfort. So actually sailing a boat at full hull speed is a bloody miserable experience and not for the faint hearted. I don't know how like the, you know, the Hugo Boss and Alex Thompson racing do all this whole thing because honestly, I'd give up. I'm, I'm, my body is weak. The boat will outlast the strength of me. So, but it is about treating it with respect. So we will be doing a whole series on how we learn to sail this boat, how we learn to respect the rig, reef down early, learn to reef effectively, because actually reefing is not simple. It is something which has to be learned and every boat has its own idiosyncrasies. I remember, not Ruby Rose, the boat before that, I naively and without experience didn't know how to reef and while trying to reef at sea in heavy weather actually snapped through the reefing line which wasn't a good place to be. So again, learning how to reef, learning to operate the boat when the conditions are clement so that when they become inclement, we're not struggling. So that is what I will be doing. This is Jack's question. I hope, you, I hope that was interesting. I hope you understand that literally for us, it's about growing into the boat and not being overly blasé about understanding that this is a supremely luxury, luxurious craft that will give us a lot of pleasure that needs to be treated with care. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That is just a little end piece to what we're doing. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. I will be back next week with more work from the Saigon Shipyard. Lots to see as we get closer to this boat being in the water. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.